Wade, first let's look back at the opening game against Texas Tech. Uh, what um, are your reflections on the game? I think the team played really, really hard. We had a lot of snaps in this game, uh, offensively and defensively. Uh, the team played really, really well. Um, looking back right now, I see one of our weaknesses is our discipline. I think you'll hear that uh, kind of across the board from coaches to players. Uh, we lack a certain amount of discipline that we demand um, every week from our players. And uh, that lack of discipline, I really felt like cost us uh, a few, you know, a touchdown here or there, you know, some, some third down conversions. And ultimately, it was just a, uh, was really just not something we needed in the game. Okay, uh, defensively, uh, a lot of people are saying you guys played a very uh, solid game. Uh, what are your impressions? Well, I thought, you know, playing a, a big 12 school like Texas Tech, a school with great tradition, a great team, uh, I, I do think, I think we kind of, we came out and we did well. We had an interception on the first drive, you know, to kind of stop them and kind of say, hey, we're in this game, we're, we're, we're here to play. And I thought it was really nice to see uh, my teammates come out and, uh, Answer that bell, answer that call, you know, in such a big environment. Uh, it's always nice to see those kind of things. Uh, but overall, I was impressed with our effort uh, throughout the game. And uh, we just like to see, you know, some, some better things as far as discipline. All right, let's look ahead to this week in uh, the Arkansas Monticello Bowl Weevils. Obviously, a uh, difference in the level of competition. Uh, this is a team that opened up with a Shutout win on off on defense and a 78 point performance. Uh, they also are a multiple offense that likes to throw the ball around. Talk about uh, how preparing for Texas Tech helps you prepare for Monticello. Well, as you said, uh, Monticello is a great team. They had a great great game last week. Obviously, with you know high scoring offense and a great defensive stand, um, can't help but be impressed with their program and the way they're they're taking uh, on every week. Um, and how Texas Tech prepares us for Arkansas Monticello onto that question. Uh, we prepare for Texas Tech like we're the underdog. Arkansas Monticello is preparing the same way this week. When we went in to play Texas Tech, we respect you know, that school, but we come in to win that game. You know, I, a lot of people think you know, it's just a money game, stuff like that. We come in to win that game. Arkansas Monticello is thinking the same thing. It's a great school, a lot of great tradition there, and they're coming in to win that game. We respect them as a team for doing that. You know, it's an honor to play against a team that thinks that way, that plays as hard as they do, and we're looking forward to playing them. All right, uh, you're at home on Saturday night for the first of five times this year. Uh, you're a senior. Talk about uh, playing at home, what it means to you and this football team. Well, Doug, I've really grown to love this university and, and love playing in Turpin Stadium. There's really nothing like it. I mean, we have a great fan base here. Um, Saturday night is just it's a rowdy, um, a lot, just a lot of fun. I mean, the student section is always just always right there behind us, backing us. Um, it's just a great, just a great environment. I'm excited to play at home, uh, just because I love being in Turpin Stadium. You know, we practice on that field. We work on that field. We're, we're on that field year round, and it's there's always something special about being home and being able to play a school like Arkansas Monticello that has such great tradition. is it, is going to have a great year and really go out and compete on our field. Thank you. Thank you. We're with senior kicker John Shaughnessy here discussing both last week's game against Texas Tech and uh, Saturday's home opener against the Arkansas Monticello Bowl Weevils here in Turpin Stadium at 6 o'clock on Saturday evening. John, first let's look back to Texas Tech. Uh, overall, give us your perspective on uh, that game. Uh, it was a good game as far as uh, just kind of getting, getting our feet wet. It, it, it wasn't what we wanted by any stretch, uh, but it was – it was a good enough game to see where we, we, we did a lot of things wrong. At the same time, we did a lot of things good, special teams-wise. Uh, we, we, we connected on two out of three field goals. Obviously, we would have wanted that, that other one. Attack, we did well. And, and, and kickoff return, we did well with the kickoffs we were able to, to return. Uh, and, and punt did, did well also, uh, excluding one or two punts. And so we, we did well special teams-wise, although we, there was a lot of room that, that we, we need to really improve if we want to compete with Monticello in this conference. So I, w I would give us you know, a C if I had to give it a grade. Um, certainly not where we need to be by any stretch, but good enough. Okay, uh, let's specifically talk about the special teams and the new kicking rules. This was the first time you were in a game where you're kicking from the 35 and you, uh, different things, the touchback comes out to the 25. Uh, now that you've been through a game, how significant were the changes to you? Uh, well, I enjoyed, I really did enjoy the changes. It, it did help being in West Texas. 
and kicking off in that dry climate. So my kickoffs, you know, carried a little bit. Um, and, and like I said, what tack was, we didn't have to cover very much because of the, the wind and the dry air. So I, I, I really liked, liked the changes as far as for firsthand experience. I don't know how that will do in this humidity this Saturday. Um, it, 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 it turned out well um, for, our, for our return team. It, it, it seemed to do well. Um, I think our two returns, we got back to the 20 or 18. So it, it was kind of the same, if you will. Uh, but so far, you know, it, I can't really comment fully on it. But it, was, it wasn't bad. It was, I, li I like it. I don't know if our return team likes it. OK, let's talk about a couple of things and how you react to them both individually and team-wise. First, individually, um, the streak ended. You missed your first field goal in forever. Uh, you came back with your second and third longest ever, and they had a lot of distance to spare. So talk about putting that miss behind you, having the streak in, and then the kicks that you made. Well, the streak was at the back of my mind. Um, after I did miss the field goal, I was reminded of the streak being over, thanks to my teammates. Um, but uh, I'm kind of glad it's over. I'm kind of, uh, I'm, and I'm certainly not excited it's over. I'd like to keep it going. But I'm glad it's, it's behind me now. Um, I'm, I, like I told, that was the first time I've ever had the opportunity to kick on the opening series of the season. And so that, I think, you know, jitters might have got to me. I, I lost focus for a couple seconds, and, and that's why I missed the field goal. It was all me. And, uh, the holder snap was great. And I was, you know, that was one thing I was glad. I was glad we got that first one out of the way uh, with me, Spencer, and Warner, because that was our first time on the field together. And when we were able to connect on the next two. So I was very proud of them doing a great job, and, and I am glad I got that, that ugly mess out of my system. Now, being 16 out of 19 on your last 19 field goals, that's pretty good consistency. So that'll work out just fine. Now, let's talk about the team's overall mentality. When you come out of a game like that um, and you're going forward, what was the mood post game? What's the mood this morning and going forward this week? Oh, well, immediate post game, we were disappointed because we all knew, uh, like I said, well, I, I'd, I'd give our greatest C. Uh, like we know, we know we did not play to our potential. We know that we could have done a lot better in that game and possibly won the game. Uh, and so we were at post game, we were kind of, you know, distraught, kind of, kind of wanting to get back out there. And I felt like just ending our workout that we're ready, we're ready to get back rolling. We, we were, we're hungry, if you will, to get, to get that next game behind us and win and, and keep moving forward. And we're focused on this win, on this, this Monticello team, because it's going to be a good Monticello team. And so it's, the, the, mood, the mood is good. I, I, like, I like what we're doing right now. We just finished a good hard workout. And so I'm, I, I know we're ready and we're focused. This, this, this loss will be behind us after this evening's film session, and then we'll be ready to roll. Okay, let's talk about uh, the, the Bowl Wheels, Division II team that scored 78 and gave up none in its first game last week. Um, Last week, you guys were the ones looking up divisionally. This week, you guys are looking down divisionally at a Division II team. What's the difference in preparation? Well, there can't be any because uh, since I've been here, the two Division II teams we've played would beat them by a total of four points. And so there's no, and, and both of those, with Tarleton and Delta, they were both very good squads. And so I don't expect anything different from, from Monticello. And uh, I think they beat the team that beat Delta State last year. Uh, so that's, you know, they're going to be a good team, and so we cannot let up at all. I think we're actually going to be a little more motivated than we were last week because we know, we know what it takes now. We know what it takes to, you know, win and, and play another team. So I think we're going to come out better. I, th I think uh, if, if we're focused, you know, th this game will, will, will if we execute, we'll, we'll be able to come out and perform at, a, I guess, an A grade, if you will. UAM's got a very good football team, obviously, this year. Um, very high uh, level of uh, education provided there. John, you're a guy who's done medical research. Uh, you're a uh, science major. What is a boll weevil? Uh, let's go. It's an insect, for sure. Um, although, I don't know where their, uh, their region, their specific region in the world is, but I'm sure they're, I'm sure it's around, it has to be southeastern U.S., I'm sure. Because uh, it, it is an insect, right? Yeah. I think it is. I don't know. I haven't taken entomology yet. So. Okay. Well, um, you'll certainly know what Bowl Evil football players are though Saturday night. Yes, for sure. No question about it. Thanks, John. <laughs>
what have you seen on the tape uh, that you'll be able to communicate to your team and use as teaching points to make them better? Well, too many missed opportunities. I mean, we had a lot of chance to make plays and didn't. Uh, in all three phases of the game, uh, you know, I felt like defensively, uh, we had to get off the field in the first half and third down we didn't and too many foolish penalties that kept drives alive uh, but uh, on the defensive side the thing I was really proud of is when I thought we tackled very well in space we made plays in space and we really really t were very physical played very physical did not give up big plays I mean the, the biggest longest play they had from a scrimmage was 23 yards so uh, did like, I thought our young corners really held up against the deep ball. I thought we played the deep ball. So a lot of things to build on. Uh, again, our effort was tremendous. Offensively, you know, a lot of missed opportunities early. I thought we had a chance to get points on the board early, and we, and we didn't get that. And, you know, when we get the ball down the red zone and we get the ball after turnover, you know, down there on the plus side, we've got to get points. And, uh, you know, I thought that was that's something we got to improve on going into this week. But as far as our effort, fantastic effort. Uh, as far as the bow weevils, I mean, we were, they're coming off a great win against um, uh, their first opponent, winning 78 to nothing. We see a lot of speed. We see a lot of talent. We see a very well-coached football team. And, you know, it's not too far in the past the Delta State scare uh, we were down 17 nothing halftime so we have a lot of respect for these division two opponents because they got great players and they're well coached and we'll have our hands full on saturday with the bow weevils all right offensively were the problems at texas tech uh, uh schematic or the execution or was it just that texas tech was that dominant i thought texas tech i mean you gotta give them a lot of credit i mean they're a big 12 opponent uh they played very physical uh you know, and uh, it, it, was, it was a combination. I mean, we've got to be better at executing, and uh, but at the same time, I thought Texas Tech really played well defensively. And, uh, you know, but we'll, we'll be better. I mean, we've we got some uh, things we're going to do that's going to help us offensively, and uh, we'll be better this week, no doubt about it. How critical is it for your offense to come out and have a big night Saturday night? Yeah, I got to. You know, what we talked about, what we have to have, all three phases have got to take care of each other. And if we get that done, we're going to be a good football team. We've got to grow up as a football team right now. We're very, very close. Uh, but, you know, there's a fine line in winning and losing. And what we've got to do is grow up. We've got a week to do it. And we've got to go get a big win against uh, Monticello, which it will be a big win. And then we'll move on to the next one. But we have to grow up. We've got a lot of growing up to do as a team, not pinpoint one spot, one position, one person. But we just have to grow up. That's why I told them after the game. We're playing extremely hard. We're doing a lot of good things. But we have to grow up and mature between today and Saturday's game. I know you don't name players of the game after losses. However, there were certainly some guys in the game who performed at a high level. Uh, who are some of those guys that you want to spotlight? Well, you know, as I said, I thought, uh, I thought we played really well up front. I mean, we really did some good things. We, they were huge uh, offensive line-wise. I mean, you know, I'm talking about 6'6", 6'7", 330 pounds. And I thought we really matched physicality there. I mean, I, they did not knock us off the ball. We controlled our gaps. We fit the run. So the D-line, I thought, did a good job. I thought we played really well at the corner spot. I mean, made a lot of plays, uh, played the deep ball well. Safeties and linebackers tackled well in space. Those were the guys that had to make the plays in space. So if I was going to brag on a group, not really one person, but as a group, safeties and linebackers tackled very well in space, took care of the deep ball at the corner spot, and really got after them up front uh, from a defensive line standpoint. So that's my bragging rights there defensively. On the offensive side, you know, we, uh, I thought Phil Harvey, uh, special teams and at the receiver spot, had some, some, some nice plays. I mean, he's, uh, his speed really showed up in, in, against a Big 12 opponent. Um, you know, Corey Simmons had a big catch. He's a guy we feel like we need to get the ball to more right now going in. And, uh, you know, just as far as uh, his first game out uh, against a very good defense, I thought Brent Henderson really did some good things. So, you know, uh, we'll grow up. We'll, we'll have a week of practice. We'll be better and just looking forward to getting back on the field. Okay, offensively you talked about changes. Would those include depth chart changes or is it more strategic change? Well, one guy we feel like we got to get a little bit – you know, 
there are some certain positions we feel like we gotta we gotta make come on, and one of those would be um, uh, Cody Jones. We we, we got to get Cody going. I mean, he missed some of camp. He's an explosive guy that we feel like can can help us. Uh, uh, another guy that Rod Davis. Rod's got to come on. He's got to grow up. He's got to help us. He's a tall X guy that can run. He's physical. He can catch. That if they come up, man us up at the X spot, uh, we can reach out there and throw a fade. And he can go and get it. Uh, Chris Devers, another guy. I mean, we got to get you know, one of our plans is to get him in the game more because he's a big explosive guy that can run, catch, and block. Uh, and then Corey Simmons is a big tall target. So you know. Uh, not saying that we're, you know, other guys aren't doing good jobs, but those are some explosive men that can help us right now that, that have to come on and grow up and, and, you know, convince us we can get them on the field more and get them rolling, get the ball to them. Getting the running game going, obviously it didn't uh, succeed Saturday night. New defensive coordinator at Texas Tech, nine returning starters. Uh, are there schematic or personnel issues there or a combination of both? You know, I, I think we just got to be better assignment-wise, execution-wise there. You know, we had some bad snaps uh, in our option stuff that I, I thought put us behind the eight ball early. But we just we have to execute better, and, uh, and we'll, there'll be a few depth chart moves as well. But schematically, we, we have to execute better. Okay. The emotional mindset of this team uh, coming off of a game like that, uh, how do you manage it during the week? And, uh, do you feel like it's where it needs to be right now? You know what? We were bright-eyed bright eyed and bushy-tailed after the game. I mean, I got after him pretty good. Told him we had to grow up. We have to execute better. You know, uh, I think three years ago we would uh, sit around and maybe uh, that might have been a moral victory for us. But, you know, we, we were disappointed in our play, and that's the difference in where this team is and where the teams of the past have been. You know, this team expects more. We expect more. They know that we could play better, and they know that if we play a little better at a couple of spots uh, and improve a little bit, we're in that game. That game, the score of that game is not indicative of how we played. So, you know, we, we have to – we control our own destiny. I mean, it's – uh, and most of the things that we did that put us behind the eight ball was us, not them. And I'm not taking anything away from Texas Tech because I think they're a great football team. They will be in a bowl game. I predict that. But the demons, we have to take care of ourselves and not shoot ourselves in the foot, period. All right, let's look. Uh, you talked some about Monticello. Uh, it's a team that uh, presents some challenges, uh, particularly put 78 points on the board. Right. Uh, and they run a multiple offense. Talk about that. Well, you know what? They've changed a little bit. They remind me a lot of Texas Tech. Very wide open, very explosive. A lot of good players. Uh, they got two new quarterbacks they're playing with right now. One guy's coming back from being injured a year ago. And uh, I've been very impressed with them. I think their skill level's high. I think they're, they're, they have a very, very uh, uh, well-coached, disciplined uh, high-powered offense that uh, we're going to have to play good defense to stop. I'm very impressed. This is a very good football team coming to Turpin Stadium Saturday night. Speaking of Turpin Stadium, one of your five opportunities to play here this year, the first one, always want to make a good first impression. Talk about the excitement that you and your team will have playing at home on Saturday night. Well, we, we always love a chance to, you know, we practice in that stadium year-round, all season, uh, spring ball, football camp and, and during the season. So, you know, uh, it's our home, period. And, uh, you know, anytime we have a chance to defend it and walk out in front of our home fans, it's an honor. So we're looking forward to opening it up and want to encourage everybody to come out and support the Demons uh, on Saturday night. All right. We're going to ask you the same question we asked our very scholarly uh, kicker, John Shaughnessy. Uh, what is a bow weevil? You know, a bow weevil is a very aggressive powerful, intimidate in, insect that eats cotton. And, and you do not want it in your cotton. It is a mean, aggressive, nasty little insect that, is, that will get after you. So uh, you don't want it in your cotton. You can tell the 3.60 biology major that and educate him a little bit. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I'm right either, but I think I'm pretty close. I'm giving you a gold star. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Senior receiver kick returner Phil Harvey is with us to discuss last week's game against Texas Tech and then this week's home opener against Arkansas Monticello. Phil, uh, let's look back at the Texas Tech game for a moment from an overall team perspective. As you guys walked off the field, as you made the long trip home, and as you are talking to each other today, uh, what does the team take out of that game? What lessons were learned and, and, and what 
does the game do for us? Uh, we we learned we learned a lot from that game because we we thought we should have won, but we just came up short. So we just learned that we need to play 100 percent all the time and get the job done no matter what. Okay, from an offensive perspective, obviously we struggled moving the football consistently. Uh, what are the things that you think we can improve upon going forward? Uh, just just believe in our coaching. They 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 gonna coach us right. We just gotta believe in. Them. Uh, if there was an offensive bright spot Saturday night, it was you catching the passes <laughs> and and running the ball back. Talk about your individual play on Saturday night. Uh, I just went out there like it was another game, my last season here, so I have to play as hard as I can. Okay, let's talk about your uh, accomplishment that was culminated Saturday night. You are now the Northwestern State University career kickoff return yardage leader. You average nearly 23 yards each time you touch the ball and kick off. Uh, you're also eighth all time in Southland Conference history and can move into the top five pretty quickly. What does all that mean to you? It's amazing. I, I really didn't know I broke the record till today, but uh, it's amazing. It, it just, <laughs> it's just amazing. Okay, for those of us who've never fielded a kickoff, what do you look for as a kick return? Obviously, y'all have return set up so you know mm -hmm. where you're supposed to go, but reality strikes when the ball hits your hands and something may get totally blown up. So talk about what you do mentally and, and physically as you feel that kick and go forward. First of all, you have to feel the ball. That's the hardest part. Once you feel it, it you, you, that's the hardest part. When you hit that hole, it, it's there. You just try to find the first hole you can. Now, you did some moving around on your 37-yard return. Talk about that play and, and how you found the space. Uh, they, was, they, was, uh, they was closing hard on the right side, and I just tried to hurry up and get to the, the other side so they wouldn't get me. All right. Now, let's talk about something that uh, lives ahead, and that's the Saturday night game at home. What does it mean to you guys to play at home in Turpin Stadium? It means a lot. This is our last homecoming game. I mean, opening game. So we're going to come out there and play like we never played before. For the offense in particular, after a frustrating night out in Lubbock, mm -hmm. how important is it to come out Saturday night and be very productive? Uh, it, it's very important. We have to put points on the board so our defense won't be on the field as much. We have to keep them off the field. Okay, now let's talk about something that I think you may know a little bit about. What is a boll weevil? Uh, I heard it's a, it's a cotton-eating uh, insect that, uh, that f used to put out farmers, and uh, we're just going to put them out. There you go. <laughs> Phil Harvey, thank you, brother. Congratulations on the achievement. Thank you.